it looks like we are recording. Hey, hello, welcome to today's painting lesson. Together, we are going to endeavor into a sailboat painting out on the water. We'll have this beautiful but soft cloud in the distance. And of course, as per usual, it will be in real time. In this tutorial, I will walk you through the steps to create soft looking clouds in the distance, give you some tips on how to make your water textures look extra realistic, and don't worry if you're fairly new to painting, I'll explain it all in a clear manner while we paint together in real time. That said, let me tell you about some exciting resources up over on the Patreon page which will help make the drawing and painting process a lot easier. As a patron, you will get access to the traceables for these lessons, which will make it so you don't have to worry about getting your proportions or perspective right by yourself. Additionally, you can find my ebooks covering composition, color palettes, glazing, brushes, as well as just about everything you need to know about acrylic painting. Also, there are over a hundred bonus lessons up over on Patreon that you can't find here on YouTube. And you can also get personalized art critiques from me so you can get feedback on your work while continuing to improve your technique. Techniques. There are a lot of great resources up there. I do recommend checking it out. And with that, now we are going to jump into the lesson. It is a long one. It is a fulfilling one. And I think there are a lot of great little lessons within it. So let's relax, enjoy, and stay creative together. So we'll begin here today with a one inch flat headed brush and we'll dip the bottom third of it into a little bit of water then proceed to wipe off the excess. That way we can dense our bristles and help our blending time. With that, we'll head to our palette and we'll grab some titanium white, a little bit of our cadmium red, about double that in our cadmium yellow. We want to render an orange and cadmium red's a bit stronger than cadmium yellow. We'll also want to darken the pigment so I'll add a hint of Mars Black, but you can see I'm just taking some with the corner of my brush, taking off the excess because it's a very strong pigment. And then we'll make it just a little bit more red heavy. Then we'll desaturate it with Naples Yellow. I think this is a beautiful pigment for the bottom of a horizon. That said, I'm going to switch my brush. Here we have a damp, smaller version of that brush and it'll be better for applying the details. We wanted to use the larger one for mixing because a brush this small really can't mix that much paint. But as you can see, a brush this small is great for working within the fine, minute areas that are between our clouds. So that's just what we're rendering right now. And I will paint over small portions of our boat here. That's okay. We can always go back in and simply redraw them. You can find the traceable up over on Patreon. Should make things a lot easier if you don't find the drawing process that comfortable, but we will take this nice and slow. That way, if you're fairly new to painting, it can be pretty intuitive and we can do a great job together. Now I am going to continuously just grab a little bit of extra paint and water on my brush rather than scraping the paint that we already have on the canvas across it because we want to A, keep our paint wet so that it's easy to blend with, but also this is going to help ensure that our pigment doesn't get too thin by going back, grabbing more. When a lot of us start, I think we have that natural inclination to just move it about as much as we possibly can, get the most out of our paint that we can. But realistically, the best paintings are rendered when we do deliver a good couple of layers. So that's what I'm doing here. Just working around these bottom clouds, all of the openings between them, and we'll start creating some gradients in just a second. Now, as we move up the sky, we do want it to get a little bit brighter. So I'm back to the mixing larger brush 
We'll grab some of our Naples yellow, work that into the mix, grab about an equal amount of titanium white, and you can see that I'm starting to work it over a little bit on the palette. That way we have a brand new color that we can compare with the previous one. And we're essentially just working away from those more orangey red hues and into a muted yellow. So we'll grab that with our smaller brush yet again, and we'll apply it very specifically to the top of our past applications. And then we'll do a soft blend down into our previous areas. And we can do that soft blend by simply applying less pressure with our brush on the canvas. When you apply a lot of pressure, typically, a couple things happen. One, your bristles expand, so you get a larger marking. Two, you push paint to both sides of your brush, so you end up with a bit of a streaky look. And when you want it to be softer, you just relieve pressure as you work from left to right if you're going for a horizontal application. Here I'm just building this up a little bit more. We have openings in the clouds right up here. So I'll work those in. And now, while it's still wet, we go back to our mixing brush, grab more titanium white, more of that Naples yellow. You can see now we have three varying hues. They don't change too dramatically, but that's good. We want there to be subtle changes, especially in this portion of the sky. This is in the distance. It's just that small detail of light working its way through this sky. And again, every layer we add, the better it'll look. It'll be more thick, the pigment will be a bit more rich and natural. Your first layer typically has the actual canvas showing through it. So, you don't actually have the pigment on the canvas that you had on the palette, not yet at least. There we go. We'll just brighten those. Now, using the pre-existing darker pigment that we have, we're going to make our first pigment for the clouds. And it's going to be the darkest pigment within the ones that are farther away. So we'll start by adding a little bit of Mars Black, just a tiny bit here and there, some of our extra Cadmium Red, just like so. And we want it to desaturate it a bit. We want it to be a very desaturated red. So we'll go back and forth between the Mars Black, the Titanium White, the cadmium red, while we keep that base of what we initially had of the orange in the sky, right? So we'll just build this up till we're quite happy with a warm desaturated red hue. From there, we'll switch to a filbert brush, which essentially is these nice rounded edges makes for softer blends, but as you can see, it's quite small, so great for working in these detailed areas. That said, we will grab that newly mixed pigment. This brush is damp, and I'm going to start applying the base of our first cloud. Now, because my brush is wet, this pigment is going to be a bit more thin. You can really see the canvas showing through, but that's okay. We're essentially just marking where we want this cloud to be initially. We'll go back, grab some extra pigment. We can layer the base for the one that's right under it. And using this brush, we can even start working in some of the details. So I'll get the majority of the pigment off. And if I don't have the majority of the pigment off of the brush, I'll move the excess up here. And then when I do have, very little left, I'll just create these little sweeping motions that move up towards the brighter open sky. 
and create a top that's uneven but whimsical in motion, right? It's going through a lot of changes. The top is semi-transparent because the pigment is thin. We can thin it and create that transition through a little bit of a tap and drag effect just to continue softening it. We can continue making more of these unique smaller clouds as we work towards the right hand side and then blend those out. Just grab a bit more water and it's going to look very messy initially, that's okay, that's just part of acrylic painting, it's not meant to look great on the first layer. Don't get discouraged when it doesn't look great. You've seen the thumbnail, you've seen the, th uh, <laughs> the preview, you know that it ends up looking the way it does. So right now it's just about having faith in the process, having faith in yourself, because we can get it there. We just need to build layers and depth. And we'll do just that together. So from there, I'm actually going to continue expanding this out towards the right hand side. And you might wonder why we painted all of the orange here if we're just going to cover it up. It's so that we have option and so that the orange can show through a lot of these applications, right? The orange behind it is giving it depth without us having to assign extra values and layers, though we will do that as well. Now, as I take a step back, which is something I'd recommend you do often just because it allows us to look at the painting as a whole rather than hyper-focusing on one specific detail or color, and when I do take that step back, I do feel like this and this are just a little bit too much of a high contrast where I want this pigment to be just a bit brighter. That way we can make this darker and have it stand out to a greater degree. So I'm just going to take some titanium white, a little bit of Mars black. I know we're making it brighter, but we do need to mix more paint in general. Grab some of our red, a little bit of our yellow, a little bit of our Naples yellow, which is less saturated. And I'm just recreating my mix but this time making it a little bit brighter, maybe a little bit more saturated. Here you can see the initial variant. Here you can see the new variant. And I always like to leave a little bit of our past pigments on our palette for as long as we can, just so we can continue to compare and contrast with them. But this is warmer, it's brighter, and I think that it'll be great for what we're doing here. So back to the filbert. Do a little application. This first layer will be a bit darker than what we have on the palette because it's going over a darker pigment and that darker pigment will show through. But as we build it up, it will get brighter. And if you just want it to be significantly brighter from the beginning, we can always pick up that mixing brush, grab some extra titanium white, probably interject a bit more our hues just so that we balance the saturation we're losing when we add titanium white because titanium white's great that it's thickening the pigment in that it's brightening it but it does come at the cost of taking away those beautiful hues so we do have to work those back in and here you can see that it just subtly, continuously gets brighter and brighter. It's not making a dramatic difference, but we're not looking to make a dramatic difference. Not yet anyway. So I'll just do a bit of my layering. We'll continue this around the boat, leaving nice little openings here and there. Then we can start building 
our cloud on the other side. But here, you can see at layer one, look how thin that looks in relation to that. It's just because we don't have as much paint, we don't have as many layers, and if that doesn't speak to the fact that we just need time and patience, I don't know what does. Now we'll get closer again. We'll continue to brighten that hue that we were working on. Put the larger brush down. And for detail work, I'm actually going to switch for the first time to our liner brush. We'll make sure it's nice and damp so that we condense our bristles, make them nice and tight. We'll grab some of that pigment. I'm going to apply it towards the edges and the tops of these applications and have it essentially just fade the clouds into the sky. So this is where we can really create some nice detail, start to build up variance within the cloud, how the light wraps around them. And you essentially want the back of the clouds to always be the darkest. Because that's where they're the most thick. And the light just can't work its way around effectively when it's that dense. So here, we'll just work our edges. going over a lot of our previous applications. You can even bring it down and in just a little bit. I'm doing a bit of a scraping motion, which is something I advised when we're, or rather advised not to do when we were putting in our base layers. But this is more detail work and we're going for more of a technique instead. I'm also going to open up some of these clouds by grabbing some of our highlights and re-interjecting some details that we might have lost along the way. See that? Already so much more interesting, right? We can also use these highlighted pigments yet again to soften the edges to a greater degree. Just work them in. We can even blend with our finger should we need to. Always a fan of finger painting. Never does get old. And then as we move up here, we can start by working with our initial orange. and creating these rounded bubble-like edges for our clouds. This is essentially the light working its way around, dissipating as it gets towards the back. And we're going to have lots of little clouds in between. We'll also, with just a damp version of our brush, start to blend back a lot of these highlights, make them softer. And how do we do that? We just relieve pressure with our brush. This will do great if your brush is nice and damp because we'll get that wet into dry blend. You can also reapply the darker hue. and that can help with your blending as well. I do want the bottom to be quite dark, so I'm not going to do much there. And we'll soften it with our finger or our brush. Not too complicated, eh? And just tapping in some good highlights.
building our volume. Then we'll move into the slightly brighter pigment that we had. And we'll work that around the edges that really protrude. Ones that stick out to a greater degree, we're not doing this over all of them. Just the areas that we want to pop more. This is how we start establishing extra depth within these clouds. And we'll go into the even brighter mixture. And this is all going to be diluted right now. It's all mixed with the darker hues, so it's not going to be as bright as what we had before, but that's good. It gives us more room to build subtly over time. We just have to keep at it. Also going to take some of that mid-orange, work it down into these. Back here, kind of want a little bit of red in it, titanium white. Typically I don't advise blending with this brush, but because we only need such a small amount, it'll actually work great. There we go. And then we can work it into these smaller clouds down below. Now we'll just take a step back, switch back to the larger flat-headed brush, remix a little bit of this pigment that we used for our base. And we could apply it with our smaller brush, but I feel like we're warmed up enough now that we can work with the larger brush and feel fairly confident in that. So that's what I'm doing right here. And just make sure that it's nice and thick. Maybe even do some blending. It is all going to transition into a cloud up here, but the color is going to change. So I'm just going to softly do so. There aren't any hard edges here. And it'll be great for a transition a little bit later on. Now, before we really refine that area, this or this cloud, I want to build up the light and the sky in the background first. So we'll do that so that we can layer everything else on top of it. It'll just make the painting process a lot easier. With that, we know that this is our brightest pigment and we know that we need to go brighter than that. We know that it needs to be bright and warm and yellow. So we have a lot of titanium white. We have a little bit of our Naples yellow, those are really the only pigments in this mixture right now. And I'll use the larger flat-headed brush because it does have that nice sharp edge. It's allowing me to cut around the edges of my clouds with ease. And I'll just build this beautiful highlight up. I'll also work it down here just a little bit because we do want it to feel cohesive. And then I'll work it up with a bit of an X-shaped pattern. That way we don't have a hard edge to it. It'll make blending later easier. Make our brush damp, grab that pigment, head over to the other side. Fill in all of these little openings. And then it's very much the same thing. We'll cut around our cloud using the sharp edges and then we'll expand into the sky with a nice X-shaped pattern. So from here, we get that wider perspective. We'll make sure that the top of our area is nice and full. Then we'll grab some titanium white and do something quite a bit different. We'll grab our ultramarine blue, just a hint about an equal mixture, not a little bit less, of Mars Black. And we'll start rendering a grayish blue. A very bright one. Before we do any real blending, we'll just layer it all the way across the top. Do need a lot more pigment than what I had on my brush. So 
So we'll layer this. And then once we have it all the way across, I know my hand's in the way, but I need to work quickly. I'm just going to blend the two together. Create a nice soft transition. Not applying much pressure with my brush. And we made the gray rather than something that was very blue initially. And we can add more blue to the mixture now because we essentially just didn't want the yellow mixing with the blue and turning into a green. So now we'll go a little bit more blue, we'll go a little bit darker. You can still see there's a bit of orange on my brush. I am making this picture quite a bit warmer than the reference photo, just because I feel like I love sunsets and I just wanted to turn it into a bit more of a sunset. And just continue to make it a bit more blue as we move up. Again, I know my hand is in the way for quite a bit of this larger blending, but there really isn't any detail work. We're just picking up paint and moving it up, moving it down, using an X-shaped pattern for the most part to do so, because not only does it move paint horizontally, but it moves it vertically. And we'll just slowly work our way up to the top here. really like the transition and gradient that we're building. Can't forget about the Mars Black, just to desaturate it. It's very easy to have a prominent blue here, and a prominent blue would look a little bit awkward with our other color choices. So now that we have that sky established, we can start working on this cloud and then we can build detail on this and maybe even change the color a bit, but we'll get to that a little bit later. For now, we'll start simply by grabbing some of our blue, mixing about half that in our cadmium red. And this will render a bit more of a warmer blue. If anything, it'll lean towards a purple as you can see. We'll desaturate it with Mars Black, not much, and Titanium White till we have something nice like that. Give it a good mix so that some areas aren't more blue or more red than others. And then, very simply, we'll just start working this into the body of this larger cloud which will again blend into this. So I'll just start that soft blend process, applying very little pressure. I'm also not getting the edges of the cloud, as you can see. I'm avoiding those. I'll also paint over our boat. I'm not too worried about that. We can always just go back in and redraw it. And if you're wondering why I like to draw it, if I know that I'm going to paint over it, it's because it's great practice and it lets me figure out the subject to a much better degree before I actually have to paint it. And I find often drawing it two or three times really does make the painting as a whole better later on. Even if you're using a traceable, just familiarizing yourself with that subject is really beneficial. So we'll just do that. Then we'll mix up more pigment because we don't really have that much on here. Every time we mix our pigment, we get a little bit better at it, right? We become more informed, becomes a better habit. We retain these ideas, these mixes, that way we can interject them into paintings that we might want to do in the future. I think we'll just desaturate it a little bit more. 
especially for around the edges. And we're desaturating it with the Mars black and the titanium white. I think when a lot of people start painting, they want to make everything really saturated and bright. And the longer you paint, the more you realize that the more muted hues are the ones that you fall in love with. So with that, I'm going to switch back to my filbert brush because I like those rounded edges. And we'll start just establishing the edges of this cloud yet again. You can see that they're sharp when I want them to be because the brush does have that sharp edge in the front, on the side, but we can also soften when it comes time. And it will over here towards the right. Just going to thicken that first, get the majority of this new pigment off of my brush. Soften here and there. There we go. And then to this edge, we'll have little pitter patters. We'll make them thin, we're applying very little pressure, using a little bit of a rounded stroke to soften. We won't do that for all of the edges, we want them to be diverse. And this is also where we can subtly blend down into this darker, more red hue. Soften it as we come up. Create these protrusions. Now before all of this starts to dry, I'll just quickly get the majority of this pigment off the brush. We'll head over here. And we'll create those soft lens towards the bottom. Working in a circular motion. I'm going to make sure my brush is nice and damp. You can really see the difference when you have that fresh paint and water on your brush. It just applies like butter. I say that. I say applies like butter. I'm going to be honest. I am not a fan of margarine or butter don't often cook with either of them and <laughs> perhaps a little personal antidote but I say applies like butter I just don't know that applying like butter is a great thing you know <laughs> there we are I'm going to bring this pigment down towards the bottom. Just fill in our negative space. Still very thin as a whole. We'll need multiple layers. But we'll also do a bit of a transition while we're here. Into this slightly distant cloud that's a bit warmer because it's farther away but it still connects and we can even if we want this is what I was talking about briefly we can apply this purple hue over top the majority of the red hues that we've established but keep the edges warmer in red and you have this really nice orangey red showing through if you make these applications fairly thin. So it can be this beautiful subtle addition, adds a lot of depth, makes it fairly cohesive. You don't have to do this, but something I had in the back of my head. And I think I really like it. 
said, you can watch me do it first and establish if you like it, and then, and then you can proceed from there, right? Let me be the, the test subject. That said, again, you have seen the thumbnail. You saw the preview, so you do know how this turns out, more so than I. And if you're still watching, you're probably pretty committed to that initial idea, seeing it through. Which I respect, considering all of the awkward <laughs> stages this does have to go through before we get there, right? That's okay. Best things in life are typically the things we're willing to put some real time and attention into. To look past the not amazing <laughs> concurrent stages with recognition that we can do something great long term. There we go. Now, once all of that is dry to the touch, we're just going to grab more of that exact same pigment and we'll go in with our second layer of many. This one will make it look a little bit more professional, but certainly not the end of the road. And as you can see, I'm not working any edges. I'm just getting the middle, doing some soft blends, working it down towards the bottom might fill in this area a little bit more actually just so that these two are a bit more unique visually might also work just a little bit of it over here just to spatially bring this a little bit forward we'll make that brush nice and damp that way the pigment doesn't dry on it switch back to our filbert make that nice and damp that way we can get those softer blends. Get the majority of the pigment off of our brush in areas that are still accepting of paint. And then we'll go in with those softer, more round applications, as well as the unique sharper bumps. And we'll just make sure that those edges have the same attention that everything else got when the second layer began, right? So all a process. You just want to make sure that it's not a hard edge. We were working with a brush with a fairly sharp application. There we go. And now we'll start treating it like it's three dimensional. So I'll get you a little bit closer. So much like the other clouds, light will wrap around it to a point. It'll dissipate. This will be the darker area, but we do want it to be a bit brighter around the edges. So we'll just interject extra titanium white into our mixture. We'll listen to the beautiful sound of that motorcycle outside. We'll make sure that that light can work its way around. Trying to make it nice and soft where applicable, where we've previously designated. And this will go on really nicely right after you apply the second layer because you'll be working wet into wet rather than wet into dry so you won't get that grainy canvas texture. Instead you'll probably just get a smooth application. 
Now I'll take the excess paint off my brush and I'll start doing a softer blend inwards. Just using that edge of the brush. We can also grab the darker mixture and then work true wet into wet without worrying about the previous one drying. Very subtle right now. That's the goal. There we go. Now yet again we get closer, more detail focused, and we can start creating additional pieces of the cloud that protrude. So this one now sticks out a bit more and you can see that trail of it heading back down this way. We can elaborate on that a little bit through a second layer, build it up, but then blend it back out. We don't want too, too much detail because we're going to have the actual boat in front and we need that to retain the majority of our focus, but having these little areas can be great for building that realism. Then here, just using that edge for the soft blend. And for those of you who might be new here, we are using my brush set. It's a personalized brush set used in all the lessons that we do here on this channel. And the idea is that you just have to buy one brush set and then you can do all of the videos, right? You don't ever have to worry about going out and picking up another brush because all of the videos that I've done since 2021 have been done with these five brushes. And we don't need too many brushes because we have very versatile brushes. Also keeps it nice and simple. Additionally, they are cruelty free and vegan, so you don't have to worry about the glues that are used or the bristles themselves entirely cruelty free which is while I love the brushes one of my favorite parts about them I feel like that's something I try to work into all of the products I buy especially as I get older it's just one of those things that ended up really mattering to me and having the opportunity to make a brush set that could correlate with those values just meant a lot. So if you're also someone who feels passionately about animal rights and shopping consciously, you can know that this brush set is something you don't have to worry about there. We'll brighten it yet again for this top portion. This top area is going to get the most light, it's going to be the brightest, you can see that it's all very soft. Getting a lot of notifications on my phone. <laughs> Sorry. I use my phone now as a uh, somewhere to keep my reference photo so I can look at it as I paint. And while I'm deviating a lot, I still find it useful so that I don't essentially accidentally fall into habits that make it look a little too cartoony, if you know what I mean. But occasionally you will hear a little buzz. And 
There we go. Oh, I love that. Then we'll build it back in. Do a little blending with the finger. You can see we just started up there and kept going. Do a little bit of that highlight towards the bottom. A little bit of a separation here between this backing cloud, which is a bit farther away and therefore receiving more light. Now we'll grab a little bit of our Naples yellow, mix that with the titanium white, create something just a bit warmer, and that'll be a fantastic way to round off these edges. It's the perfect transition color. There we go. Now we'll take that step back grab that nice thick pigment that we have and we'll create some little wispy clouds out in the sky here make them nice and soft with my hand but also soften the edges with the brush And this will just be great to create some dynamic movement, bring the eye in towards the center here. In the reference photo, we have a lot up towards the top, but to be honest, I don't know that I really want those yet. Maybe we'll incorporate them, maybe we won't. But it's one of those things that I think we'll decide later on. So now we have some little accent pieces, which I actually like a lot. In the reference photo, there's another really warm cloud that's coming from here. I think we'll keep that subtle. We'll switch to the liner brush, mix up some of that really bright pigment that we used for the highlight in the sky. And we'll just work that into these clouds that we worked on earlier. And I said that we'd go back to. I think it's finally time. I feel like we have enough established that we can articulate how much highlight and detail we want within this space. I'll get you a bit closer though. So here we are. Just grabbing more of that pigment. Working it along the already established brighter edges. Find its way back here. We can also run it underneath and behind this cloud. Do little highlights on these backing ones. But I also want to create a more orange mix. Yet again, fairly desaturated. And I want to build that highlight around the edge of this side of the cloud. 
You can see we'll just work it into some of these details. We'll blend it down using a soft rounded application. We can work it on this side as well. I just want to bring this and this visually a bit closer together. You know what, I'm actually already loving this. I think we can expand on it just a little bit. through some of our pre-established clouds. I don't want to overdo it. This is one of those things where up close it looks fantastic, but I don't know what it looks like from farther away. So I'm not going to push it too, too much. I'll just do a natural expansion, let it dissipate as we move up. And then we'll make it more yellow and brighter. Right. Then we'll apply that to these edges. Just a little bit farther out, but still overlapping our orange. This is the most saturated yellow we've built. Don't know if I love it yet. Now we'll go back to just the Naples yellow and titanium white which is very desaturated, but very bright. And we'll work that towards the edge of all of these applications. We'll blend it in. Though right now I'm not really doing a lot of that blending, I'm just applying, that way I can go back and do the blending. Just wanted to get the majority of the pigment off the brush, so I didn't have too much to work with. And this is actually muting those brighter hues very nicely. Or those more saturated hues rather, because this is definitely brighter. And we'll just blend it in slowly and steadily. Though not too slowly, because I do want the wet into wet blend. You can see I'm just working that light in more and more. Trying to get that soft gradient. There, perfect. Oh, I love that. It's a bit whimsical. Now, we're actually going to take a bit of a step back because I want to open up this side a little bit. And I'm going to go in with more of that orange that we used initially. And that'll be our first pigment. And then we'll switch over to the brighter variant, which is just the Naples yellow with titanium white. And we'll just drag that sky inwards, essentially. But we have that nice orange around the edge, which we can blend with and create a good transition in. All right? So now we have an opportunity to add back in detail create some really unique movements within these clouds. Though we don't want it too detailed because again, we don't want to take away from what will be our boat, right? Or even the water in the foreground because that'll be beautiful too. There we go.
then just small openings. Oh, I like that a lot. Really feels like it comes together into this larger piece. And this moves the eye back up this way. That moves the eye down that way. That's all pointing. It's a lot of leading lines. This as you kind of swoop into the painting. One more thing we can do from a distance is we can add extra detail into these. And I'm doing it from a distance because it'd be easy to add too much detail close up. This is also going to keep our brush or applications a bit more loose. But I'm just working my way in with actual line work to establish edges for the clouds where the light is working its way around. I'll make the top quite bright. We can always simplify if we need to. Don't want too much of this pigment on my brush for this process. You can see we're just working that light in, creating mass and volume through the edges. And it's all very subtle because it's very watered down. entirely separate mass there if we want. We can also take it out. I think going with that more subtle look is actually really great. Said. I think I'm quite happy with where it is. Now we'll take a break from our clouds and we'll start working into the water with our larger flat headed brush. We'll begin with a good amount of our ultramarine blue, a hint of our cadmium red just to give it a slight purple. Then we'll desaturate and thicken with titanium white and Mars black. Don't want too, too much. Of the Mars Black, we do want this to be a mid blue. We'll do a test by cutting across the horizon. You can see that I'm not doing it with a singular stroke, but rather a large collection. And we're doing that. like this, so that we just have more control. Typically, if you make a longer stroke, <clears throat> sorry, I need to cough. <laughs> a, little <coughs> a little bit under the weather. Typically, if you make a longer stroke, your hand will glide and it'll curve. So you won't actually get a straight marking, you get something that goes like that, or like that. And by breaking it up into lots of little strokes, we can just work to avoid that. While I still have a lot of fresh paint on my brush, while it's still damp, I'm just going to work around the actual boat. And then carefully, I'll work down from that horizon line. We can work vertically for the initial strokes just to clear some ground, make sure that we're safe. Then we can rework all of them horizontally. So if any of those brush strokes show through, 
they're showing through in the correct direction, right? I'll get you a bit closer though. And as you can see, first layer, a little bit thin, so we'll likely have to go in and do a couple. But I am applying a lot of paint here. We'll be careful up towards the top when we do those second layers. And I'm not going to scrape my brush into the canvas to deliver that paint. I'm just going to go back to my palette and grab more. Now because our brush is damp, all of this should be fairly wet and remain so for a decent amount of time. And we'll just cover the remainder of the canvas with a nice simple base layer which we can add our moving dynamic water on top of. I'm also trying to get a lot of strokes which clear both sides of the canvas. That way we don't have areas that just stop in the middle and render little markings like that. I'm just going over areas as they dry or as I find openings. Right below the boat could definitely use a little bit of extra attention. Or rather the boat to be. There we go. Nice and easy. Now, once that's fully dry to the touch, we're going to head back to our palette and mix up a much darker variant of that same pigment. So, we'll do so in the same spot, utilizing our blue, a little bit of red, this time about double the amount of Mars Black as we used last time, and we still will use some Titanium White. We're essentially just switching the amount of Titanium White and Mars Black that we use. And I do want it to be somewhat saturated, so we're just interjecting some extra blue back into the mix. That said, I don't want this brush to apply it because it's far too large. Instead, we're switching back to our smaller flat-headed brush Make sure it's nice and damp, just dip it in some water. Grab a minimal amount of this pigment. Then we'll start on the foreground. And we'll begin by defining some more noticeable waves. And what we're painting right now is just the area that's opposite to the light. So the light is going this way, the wave is coming up, and then there's this portion that comes back down, right? This portion that comes back down isn't facing the light, and it's somewhat dense. So we're seeing these darker mixtures of hue and value. We want some to be larger than others. Diversity is always a good thing, right? Something else I like to do is I apply a very minimal amount of pressure. And then I apply more in the middle and then I apply less at the end. And that makes it go from small to large to small. Now, if anything, I feel I may have actually made those slightly larger than I wanted, and I can make them smaller again fairly easily with another application, but we are going to try to already learn and remedy by making all of our future strokes, which you can see me doing now, just a little bit smaller than what I had trying to make them somewhat unique, trying to make them kind of intertwined to a point. They're also 
larger close to us. And as we start moving upwards, which I'll show you here just as a, an example, once we get a little bit of this paint off our brush, they're going to get tighter together and they're going to get smaller. They'll also get more linear. So it's a lot of horizontal markings, very little pressure. Where here you have a lot of separation, it's a bit more unique. We'll finish off this bottom area. Then we can come back up here. It's one of those things where initially you're very mindful of all of your strokes and that's great. But as you progress, it almost becomes a second nature. and you put less and less thought into it. In that scenario, if you find that it becomes a little too visually samey, a little too similar, you're running into patterns that you don't want, there is an easy fix. And that is, again, we just hold our brush farther back for the application process. like to begin over previous waves to get the initial bit of my pigment off of my brush before I work my way to the top here because this is getting a little bit more thin the actual pigment you can see that it's more transparent less opaque and that's not a bad thing just makes it look more subtle Gives us a greater contrast in the foreground. Markings are still getting smaller as we move up. We have new pigments, so what do we do? Find a spot in the foreground to accentuate. Kind of ironic, we call it foreground when we're painting water, but it is still within that perspective, that closeness to us. And then we just work our way upwards as that pigment dissipates. And then eventually it becomes almost just like a little dotting. I use less of the actual brush head, more so just focusing on the corner. So the foreground improves as we work on the background. Now that I have very little pigment, we can just go and splash in that little bit of rhythmic pattern. The background, it really is just a collection of speckled dots. And I'm just using the corner of the brush for that. Doing a lot of dancing with my brush so that it's unique. And then as I get here, it's a bit more of an elongated stroke. And I'm out of pigment. So back to the palette, back to the foreground.
just checking in my viewfinder how it's looking because it does give me a bit of a distant view of it and I do recommend taking those steps back from your canvas every once in a while just to make sure that it's progressing in the way you want it to. We'll add a bit of a shadow underneath here for the boat. Have it dissipate. And then once I have almost no pigment, then we'll continue over here as we did on the left hand side. Very subtle. And then we're going to need to let all of this dry. Just softening the shadow for the boat. So it's actually the next day and everything is fully dry. We are heading back to the larger flathead brush and we're going to add some highlight to the water. Now I want a slightly darker version of what we have up here in the sky. So I'll we'll start with an abundance of our Naples yellow. We'll thicken it with about half that in titanium white. Grab a hint of our Mars black with the corner of our brush taking off the excess because again, we don't want it to be that bright. Often the reflections are darker than that of what they are reflecting. Grab a hint of our cad red. Again, just using the corner. We don't want too much of an abundance. We can do a little test, maybe on the cloud here. That looks great. And it'll be on a darker pigment. So it'll be darker than what we have on the palette, right? As this will be semi-transparent, we will see everything underneath it. And I'll switch to the smaller flat headed brush as well. It's getting you a little bit closer. So the smaller brush is wet or at least damp. I like to keep it damp, not wet. I find that gives us the right consistency. And then I'm going to head in between the darker mixtures and start creating highlighted tops of waves. So these are going to essentially fit in between, in a lot of cases, our blue and our dark blue. Also going to want thick applications, so I'll go back and apply them a couple of times. But you'll see that we'll start not only working on top of these, but in between like so. Also going to begin on the left hand side. The middle won't actually be this color. That's because we have the larger cloud blocking it. And this is just the reflections of the brighter lights that we have on either side. So, as we move back, we follow the general ideas that we previously established in that our strokes get less movement. They also get smaller. Additionally, they become a little bit more horizontal, but we do still have crossover to a point till we get into that middle area. Speaking of middle area, when I almost have no paint left on my brush, that is when I do move into this middle area. 
we just let it naturally dissipate. We have a much more subtle highlight. This way it's cohesive, but that reflection is not, not the same, and it shouldn't be. See that? Now we'll grab a bit more. Take the majority off in an area that really deserves that highlight. And then as I run out of paint, we work our way into the back, which is small horizontal strokes. And then we'll go for a bit more of a tap as we get towards the top third, utilizing the corner of the brush and not much more. So now we don't have much paint on the brush and we're not using much of the brush. Something we can build over time. But first, Head back down there. Might make my mix a little bit watery, or rather a little bit more watery, as I move up. That way it's a bit more subtle. But also I get the really sharp markings. You can see that we didn't get this effect with the first application or the second on my third in just this area. So give yourself to that patience. Good. We'll continue. There we go. This is another process where you're going to want to take steps back frequently and just make sure that it's progressing in the way that you want it to because it's easy to get caught up in the details of the foreground and lose sight of the painting as a whole. I am avoiding the actual shadow of the boat for the most part. Now we will take that step back. So far, I think I like it a lot. I think maybe it could be elaborated on, It'd be a bit more dramatic visually, but I don't want to do that until we work on the other side. So that's what I'm doing. And that's just a, like a common practice in how I like to paint. Subjects aren't really finished until we see how other subjects interact with them because it's more about the whole than an individual. So we'll just keep cutting in between all of these openings. Get the majority of the pigment off in the areas in which it needs to be most visually present. And then we'll work our way up where the strokes will get smaller, the pressure will lessen, the pigment will dissipate. We 
We don't see detail as it gets farther and farther away. Not really. Got a little dark in the room. Seemed to have a cloud overhead. I have a nice view of the water from this condo and I've been looking out at the different boats on the water over the last week. It's so beautiful. Just seeing them interact with the waves. Let's get you closer again. So here we can see this larger area of still just blue. We'll start to remedy that through these quick little cuts. And if you recall, on the other side, we needed about three layers, a boot. <laughs> oh, and the Canadian accent just slips in there. Can be prevalent, eh? Curious, where have your favorite sunsets been? Is it where you live? Is it, on a, is it on a vacation? Is there a memory tied to one that perhaps makes it the sunset that definitive defining view of what a scene like this can look like. I feel like often the best sunsets aren't necessarily the ones that have the most range in hue or most dramatic saturation, but rather the ones that are tied to meaningful days and experiences. This one just really brings me back to relaxed summer afternoons where it wasn't necessarily a singular day or experience, but rather the mood of a summer and the memories that carry with it. Love a good sunset. We'll just do a hint of it in here, not as much, but we'll start connecting. Then when I have very little pigment, I'll go back up to the top and we'll just do that little pitter patter. So yet again, we just take a couple of steps back. You notice that this area is a little bit darker than this doesn't have as much yellow because we just have more physical cloud there blocking that area. That said, I definitely didn't do as many layers over on the right-hand side's foreground as I did the left-hand side. So I feel like there's an imbalance there that we can fix, that we likely should fix. easy enough to fix. Now I really like the design and it is fully dry by the way. However, I feel like the hue could be a little bit warmer as a whole. So we are going to do a glaze. We'll take our larger flat headed brush, make sure that it's very wet, not just damp, but wet. We'll mix up a bit of an orange. So we'll grab about double our cadmium yellow as to what we have for our cadmium red. Grab a hint of our Naples yellow, which will Desaturate it a little bit, but keep it nice and warm. We'll continue to thin it. 
maybe make it slightly more orange just because we're putting it over blue and we don't want it to turn into a green. So if it's a bit more of a red base, it'll desaturate. Well, not desaturate, but it, it'll mitigate the greens that we could have had. Now this is very wet. It's essentially just water. It's not actual paint. But as you can see, we'll just apply that, let it lessen as we move towards the back. Just going to grab some extra water from my brush. Move that up as well. Not adding any extra paint to the mixture. And I'm just going to work this until I have a nice even coat. You don't have to do it. It's really just if you feel like your water should be warmer or cooler. Now here we have it from a distance and I definitely do like it better. From there we'll just do some little touch-ups essentially of the waves that we have in the foreground and so I'm just mixing up the same highlight that we had previously. Very minimal amount of Mars black, a lot of our Naples yellow, a little bit of that titanium white, hint of our CAD red, hint of our CAD yellow. And we'll just keep mixing until we have that color that we have right here. And I think, I think we found it. So in these touch-ups, a lot of what I want to do is connect. Because our canvas is wet now, this will also have a really nice application. It'll feel really smooth. We'll get soft blends. So it's great to render that connective tissue between subjects. From here, I'm going to go ahead and re-sketch in my boat because we did lose quite a bit of it in the painting process. And then we can get started on it. That said, again, if you do struggle with the drawing process, you're really just a big fan of painting and you want to make that a lot easier on yourself, make sure that you get the perspective, the scaling, the details correct. I will have the traceable up over on Patreon, which is also where you can get the eBooks which includes acrylics for beginners, which is essentially the essentials. It'll teach you about glazing, composition, mixing colors, all of that good stuff. There are also a bunch of ebooks full of other traceables, some landscapes, some flowers. Top of that, we have our exclusive Facebook group you can get access to, which is where everybody shares their renditions of these. It's a great supportive community who I actually adore, and everybody just kind of helps everybody else out, figure out what they're doing, you can get great ideas, as artistic liberties are wonderfully taken. You can also find images of all of the materials up on Patreon, along with the reference photos, and all of that good stuff. There are also individual art critiques, so you can hear from me about your work, but that's, uh, that's listed in the video description. It's a great way to support the channel, but if you can't do it, also no worries. Just know that you can get the traceable up there if you feel like that's something that you really like to help you along with this painting journey. So, kind of a funny update, or at least one in which I I'm choosing to look at it that way. I messed up with the glazing. And sometimes you can fix that by just adding a lot of water and taking off the pigment you added. However, sometimes you can't. And I fell into the camp of can't. So 
I ended up repainting the water from scratch. I put down a base layer of basic blue and now I'm back just repainting little waves and movements I'm using a liner brush to do a lot of the detail work because on the second iteration here I decided to make all of my line work a lot smaller. You can probably tell the waves very tiny and I also opted for a slightly more pink variant of what we were working with for the highlight. So it's a little bit different and I think I actually like it a little bit more. It's definitely a calmer look to the water and it makes this foreground look slightly more distant than it did. Neither of which is wrong or right. It really comes down to personal preference. So if you want it to look like this as opposed to what you were just looking at, make your strokes smaller and just tap on a lot of detail with a liner brush as I'm doing now. If you want it to be larger, just follow the steps exactly as we did before and you can have either this slightly more pink highlight or you can go with the more yellow gold that I did initially and this one just has it's the same mix, it just has a little bit more cadmium red. So, here we are. But, I'm choosing to look at it as a positive because often when we repaint things, we end up learning, we get better at them, we do a, a rendering which we like even more, and I, I feel like I'm there. So, it's taken a couple extra hours now, but I like the painting more. So. When you're glazing, do be careful, because it might mean redoing things. And if you've never glazed before, I do recommend doing so for the first time on a different canvas. But, you have some options, and it's not the end of the world if you have to redo a section. Not at all. Starting from scratch here, doing even better than the first time. Another just good general life lesson, right? Sometimes we think things are great, then something happens, and then it's, you know, do we, do we try again? Yeah, yeah, we'll try again. And we'll find even more ways to improve and create magic, right? That's resilience faith in what could be. Thought I'd get you a little bit closer here just for these taps because I know they're small. You're probably not seeing much from that distance. Might not even be seeing much from this distance to be honest. But that's why it's great. It's subtle. Beautiful that way. In the distance, I am just tapping on little dots. There isn't even a drag in it anymore. It's just a little bit of a almost shimmer on the water in the distance. I personally tend to accidentally avoid the edges, so I'm just going to make sure that I do that. As you get closer, we can turn into an actual marking. But yeah, this is round two. A friendly reminder to practice your glazing beforehand. And also a lesson that even if you don't, and it turns out to be not what you want, that's okay. That is a okay. We can rebuild. Now, from here, we'll get quite a bit closer, and as you can see, I've redrawn in different portions of our boat with the little railings on the side. We have the larger pieces for the masts, 
there's this little piece of cloth which kind of acts as a shade piece. And we're going to begin rendering it with a very dark pigment. So for our mixing, of course, we have our larger flat-headed brush. I'm going to begin with a purple that leans more towards blue. So I'm using both the ultramarine and the cadmium red. We'll interject some titanium white. Don't need too, too much, but here you can see that it's less dark than the black, but still darker than the other pigments that we had that we used in the water. Get the majority of the pigment off our brush. Switch over to our smaller flat headed. Make sure that it's damp. Go ahead and take my pinky finger, ground it on my easel or canvas to eliminate shake from my hand. And then we're going to essentially paint in a silhouette of the boat. So we're not aiming for depth right now. We just want to establish the form. You can also see that my pigment is very transparent. That's just because here we want those incredibly sharp lines and that's best achieved with a very wet brush. It means you'll have to do multiple layers, but that's okay. We put in a lot of time already, might as well continue to do so. And just do a really good job. Apologies if I cough again, I still seem to be under the weather. At the point where it seems like it's okay during the day, but in the evening, it uh, flares up a little bit. And it's been funny because I haven't had asthma since I was a kid, but it kind of feels like that. Anyways, have been eating healthy, counting the macros, counting the micros, having my daily fruit and vitamins, so should be better pretty soon. You can see just how much detail we're able to get out of this brush. It's great. I don't know when I did that. Did you watch me do that? <laughs> I, you know what, that's a good thing. <laughs> that's so funny. When did that happen? I'm going to watch back the footage. <laughs> like, oh, oh, that was the moment, was it? It's okay though. Here we just have the, uh, the edges that are holding up this canopying piece. I say that's good because it'll give me an excuse to show you how we fix little mess ups like that. It's not a big deal. Next, I'm going to take my palette and I'm going to put it below my easel because I want to hold my brush and a ruler. Just lining up that middle portion. Making that nice line. Make it a hair thicker at the bottom. Here we go again.
nice and clean. Maybe these little pieces that protrude. Just like that. You can barely see them. Then we'll make our brush even a little bit more wet. Because you want these to be even smaller. So less pressure, slightly more water. Hand might be in the way, I apologize if so. There we go. Even smaller. Look at that. Okay, we'll try again. Just grabbing some pigment. Taking our time to line it up. Beautiful. Okay. Very happy so far. We are going to continue to be very cautious. And one more. There we go. So, we have all of these nice little pieces established. Now we need to do just a quick little second layer. Make sure that our pigment's nice and thick. And then once this is applied and dry, we can start adding detail. Make it three-dimensional. There we go. And that said, let's handle that together. So for it, we'll need our blue. Titanium white. Maybe a little bit more blue. We're just remixing the pigment that we have on the base. Still pretty obvious. Let's make it a little bit brighter. Just do these little tap and drag effects, similar to what we actually had in the background. It's a little bit better. We're getting there. Okay. Now let's grab our Naples yellow. Hint of our cad red. Titanium white. I think I'm losing my voice a little bit. Oh no. I do apologize. Here I'm just doing taps with the corner of my brush. I believe I did the majority of these with the liner brush, but the corner of this should work quite well. We'll just spread out this pigment just in case it's a little bit different. Then it'll be cohesive in the very least. And then we wait for that to dry and we just do it again. So you can see that we almost have what we need but that darker pigment is still showing through because our pigments are semi-transparent and we just need a little bit of time for it. That said, in the time that took, that started to dry. Now, we can have fun in there. So we'll grab our blue, titanium white, Mars black, hint of our red. We're going to continue working with the same palette that we have been for the most part. I want this to be quite a bit darker than what we have in the water though. This can be a highlight, just separating different portions of our boat. I'll probably take some liberties from the actual reference photo in this. As
We do need to simplify. Do the canvas size. Go for a darker variant. Just a little bit more Mars black. Paint that in the bottom. We don't want it to look like we have a pure black on here. We want it to have that matching hue. If yours is warm, it should be warm. If the surrounding view is cool, it should be cool. Add a little bit of highlight to the top and the edge of the boat. See, we're just slowly building these hues. I have to be careful with this pigment though because it's getting closer and closer to the actual pigment of the water. Now we also, sorry, hands likely in the way there. Need to reapply the little railings. Maybe there's a really dark blue. Have them cut across the highlights we just established. See? Definitely more dimensional that way. Then we'll take this brush, we'll put it down. Switch over to our liner. Mix up some of the beautiful highlights that we had down there using our red, Naples yellow, much more Naples yellow than red, titanium white. Just going to make the brush nice and damp again, take off the extra pigment. It will likely reflect some of these beautiful colors. There we are. Highlights will exist for the most part around the edge, then really dissipate as we get towards the center. If we are extremely careful, we can also add a little bit of it here. that adds a lot of dimension. Now we'll take a small step back. Continue with the liner brush. However, we'll grab some of our ultramarine blue, Mars black, titanium white. Mix up a darker blue, grayish darker blue. Make sure our brush is nice and damp. And right under, using a little taps and occasionally a drag, I'm going to rebuild and work on my reflection, or rather my shadow. While 
Apologies. While you may not have had to redo the water, like me, it's very likely that you will have to still go back and play with the previously applied reflective shadow. I'm just trying to make this look like it really belongs within the setting, right? Love the detail we're getting. You can make it fairly reflective if you want. You can make it much more subtle if you want. It'll depend on the movements of your water. And you can see that I'm just slowly building it up. Wasn't a lot from the beginning. I'm not sure that's straight. <laughs> Now, as we near the end, I'm going to grab our smaller liner brush, take some of our Naples yellow, move that to a clean spot on the palette, grab a bit more than that in our titanium white, hint of Mars black, and we'll do something a little bit bold here. You don't have to follow along, but I'm going to follow this up. I'm just going to paint a little moon. Delicately. Make it tiny. It isn't dramatic. It's just another subtle beautiful piece of the painting. And I'll just work the edges to be a bit softer, applying minimal pressure, blending it out. There we go. I love that. I think that's such a nice addition. We'll build up our layers in the middle. And we are coming to an end here. So I'd like to say a big thank you to all of you for being here with me on this painting journey. Always wonderful to know that there are people that are out there that are still excited but working with the physical medium that is paint and excited to honor nature in these lessons. Hope you found it relaxing. I hope you have a bunch of new ideas that you're going to interject into your own pieces. And that you just enjoyed the process. I'd also like to say a big thank you to everybody up over on Patreon for making lessons like this happen. If it wasn't for you, I would not be able to put the time that I do into planning or painting these. Redoing the water did take some time, but I think it really worked out. And of course, if you are new to the channel, you can find Patreon in the video description. And there you can get the trace tool to help you with drawing the boat and the clouds, getting all of the dimensions correct. You can get the ebooks up there, personalized art critiques, 
where you can send in images of your work and make a little video talking about it. You can get access to our Facebook group where you chat with the community and post your work, see other people with renditions. <coughs> Apologies. There are also, I believe, over a hundred bonus lessons up on Patreon now, too, that you can't find on YouTube. And some of them are big, they're 24 by 36 inch pieces. I want to do another one of those soon. They just make for a great bonus series up there. Because often they take five or six episodes and it just doesn't really make sense to do on YouTube. Because it's such a big project, it's much more for the people who really, <laughs> really love painting, who are really invested, right? But I am thinking about what the next one of those is going to be. So you can find all of that in the description along with my brush set, which is again entirely cruelty free. And you won't ever have to guess if your brush is like mine, you'll just know. Because I always use the same five brushes that come in the set. That said, Towards the end of the videos, I always like to give you a little keyword, something you can put in the comments to know that you are one of the, on average, 13% who makes it to the very end. And if you are one of those, what should our keyword be? You know, I'm getting pretty hungry. I think I'll probably go have a snack. Might try these kiwi berries for the first time. Pretty excited about that. So why don't you just note your favorite snack in the comments. You can either just type it or you can work it into a sentence, but it'll be a fun way to note that you were one of those 13% in a casual way. All know Everybody else you got here will know. Everybody else will just wonder why, why we're all just talking about snacks. But I feel like snacks are important when we're painting. When you forget to eat, often you get a little shaky and it makes it harder to paint. So making sure that you are drinking your water, getting some food in in the process is important. And therefore, I think snacks are a, a good topic for the keywords. Let me know in the comments. And again, big, big thank you to everybody still watching, to everybody. <coughs> I apologize. I uh, guess I am a little more sick than I thought. But everybody who's watching, everybody up on Patreon, everybody who comments, everybody who's new here. Thank you for being a part of the community. Really hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. And I'll see you soon with a new lesson. Next Saturday. I actually have a really neat painting planned, so I will see you soon. Turn on those notifications. Click that little bell button. You know what? I had walked away from the canvas and I was getting ready to edit the video, but I thought, you know what? Why don't we get a little bit bold towards the end? We, in the studio, are not afraid of failure. If it doesn't work out, we'll figure it out. But I'm going to take my smaller flat-headed brush, I'm going to remix the darker hue that we used for the boat, which was predominantly Mars Black and Ultramarine Blue, with a little bit of Titanium White. Do a little test in there. It's good. Now,
we're just filling in this larger part I'm a little too close right now to see if I like it I'm hoping it looks good Do not fear failure. Okay, taking a step back. It's so much better. Oh, I love that. Okay. They're good lessons here. <laughs> oh, that's so wonderful. I'm very happy. Paint the... Uh other side of it, just poking through there. That's great. Okay, with it, we can remix a little bit of our warmer hue that we used as the highlight. You know, there's still quite a bit of Mars black and ultramarine blue on the brush, so it's a bit harder to get to that natural pink. But if we just keep adding paint and mixing, we will get there. Alternatively, you can just clean your brush. <laughs> Almost there. Then we can just Add it to the edge. Also grab the darker pigment, do a little bit of a blend. Make it nice and smooth. And just like that, the painting view is complete. So, again, above all, as always, stay creative. Okay, so admittedly, I got a little excited, and I forgot, when we add that, <laughs> pardon me, we also need to remix the pigment that we used for the shadows in the water, because we now have a much larger subject. to incorporate the implication of. Make it a little bit brighter. Make sure we don't have a lot of pigment on our brush. Just let it dissipate as we work our way down. Just like that, I think we have what we want. So, for perhaps the third time this lesson, that is the conclusion. But it is a friendly reminder, keep your painting out, keep it up. There are going to be plenty of opportunities and ideas that you have over the next week of just having it kind of peripherally in your vision and it'll get better through all of that. So enjoy, have fun, and I'll uh, <coughs> focus on getting better so the next painting lesson doesn't have all of the coughing. Again, my apologies. 
but I'm really happy with how this turned out. And I hope you are just as happy and enthusiastic with your rendition too. So you have a, a lovely day or evening. And again, for the second time, as always, stay creative.